Let's break down three running backs, three wide receivers, a quarterback and tight end that I think you need to potentially avoid going into week 13 of 2024 fantasy football. All right, let's start the video off with James Conner of the Cardinals. And this is a player that I'm really concerned about going into the week as the Arizona Cardinals have just been a little bit wishy-washy as of late. And it's really hard to trust them on a weekly basis. And they get a tough matchup this week against the Minnesota Vikings, giving up the third fewest fantasy points to opposing running backs. So I don't want to overreact to last week. I mean, it was Conner's worst performance on the season in my opinion uh 1.14 yards per carry he added a couple receptions which helped out that fantasy stat line got you to 9.9 fantasy points i mean listen connor's still been very good on the season and as always in these videos i'm not saying just flat out bench everybody in this video but you at least got to consider some of the matchups and things like that and Connor has still gotten you double digits in every game except for three on the season as the RB15 and is averaging 14.6 fantasy points per game. But on the road here against Minnesota, I just have concerns about any running back playing this Minnesota Vikings defense. They are no joke when it comes to stopping the run. And like I said, the Cardinals have just been a little bit up and down lately. It's hard to say what we're really going to get out of this offense on a weekly basis and I think this game script is going to turn more into the Cardinals needing to throw the football so I think this could be a down day for James Conner on the ground maybe he gets some involvement in the passing game maybe he does end up uh, running into the end zone and scoring a touchdown maybe he's okay but I think that the ceiling is definitely lower for James Conner going into week 13 so make sure you guys are weighing your options when it comes to the running back position so one risky line I'll take on underdog this week is the lower on James Conner's total rushing yard sitting at 50 57 and a half rushing yards. He has not hit that in his last two games. Like I said, he's got the potential for some receptions, maybe a touchdown in this matchup, but the rushing yards are going to be the most difficult to come by when it comes to this matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. So I'm hitting the underdog, taking the under on James Conner's total rushing yards. Don't forget, guys, all new users who sign up on underdog with promo code the catch are getting a free nfl pick em for week 13's action take your free pick em. take the lower on connor's total rushing yards if both of those lines hit you're going to automatically triple your cash entry and once again when you sign up with promo code the catch not only are you going to get that free nfl pick em, you're also going to get a 50 percent deposit match up to one thousand dollars on underdog all right, next up is one of the biggest busts on the entire season, and that is Travis Etienne of the Jaguars. And believe it or not, I've gotten questions on the week about Travis Etienne and even one question, at least, on Tank Bigsby. I'm not starting any Jaguars running back this week. We don't know who's playing quarterback yet. If it's you know, Trevor Lawrence, that's better for the Jags offense. But either way, I have no interest in starting any Jaguars running back, especially Travis Etienne. Like he had gotten dropped in some leagues. Some people have picked him up. He's been on the bench and now he's probably going to be the starter. Is Bigsby still a little bit banked up? Bigsby might play. I don't know. But Houston's very good against the run, giving up the six fewest fantasy points to the running back position. I know this past week they weren't great against Tony Pollard, but I'm just not risking it with any Jaguars running back this week. I don't want Travis Etienne in my starting lineup, and I hardly want any Jaguars running back on my roster, period. So if you own a Jaguars running back, do not start either of them going in to week 13. This is an awful matchup, and especially if we get Mac Jones at quarterback, do not start either of them. I know Trevor Lawrence trending in the right direction, but at the end of the day, I'm staying away from this backfield essentially for the rest of the season, but definitely in this tough matchup in week 13. All right, and last but not least is Javante Williams of the Denver Broncos in that Monday night football game gets the Cleveland Browns giving up the seventh fewest fantasy points to opposing running backs. And once again, believe it or not, I'm still getting questions about this backfield. This backfield is just way too difficult to call. And this is a throw first offense. This is a Bo Nix led 
offense. There's probably going to be another game or two on the season where we see, you know, one of these running backs pop off and have a, a good game or whatever, score a touchdown, get involved in the passing game. But good luck guessing who and when that's going to happen. You got Javante Williams, you got Audric Estime, you got Jaleel McLaughlin. All these guys get some sort of involvement. Williams had 2.4 points this past week. Estime had 1.5, and McLaughlin had 4.4. I know the game script didn't really benefit them, but there's just no telling what's going to happen here, and this is a bad matchup against the Cleveland Browns. This is a primetime game. They're going to try and put Bo Nix on display, have him sling the football against a bad Browns secondary. This is a pass-funnel team. Good against the run, bad against the pass. There's nothing here that is good for any Broncos running back this week. I am 100% avoiding Javante Williams and any other Broncos running back. No need to start any of these guys on a week where we have no bye weeks in week 13. All right, let's move along to the wide receiver position. And once again in this video, we're not just flat out benching everybody but we're at least looking at matchups and other factors. And I'm a little concerned about my guy, Zay Flowers, this week, who has 11.9 or less fantasy points in three straight games. The floor has somewhat been there. And I know that part of Flowers' play is like he's boomer bust, right? And he has those big weeks. And when you bench him and he has a good week, you feel bad about it. He is your wide receiver, six on the season, averaging 13.7 fantasy points. But this Eagles secondary, I, I know that they played very poorly, so to speak, in terms of how they've been playing as of late against um, the Rams this past week and Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. But, man, Quinion Mitchell is just absolutely balling out. Uh, Cooper DeGene is absolutely balling out as well. And it really makes you concerned about wide receivers, wide receiver ones on a weekly basis, right? I mean, Cup, Puka came through. Does that really surprise anybody? I'm just worried about Zay Flowers this week. Now, it is a good game script potential here. It's going to be tough for both teams to run the football in this one as you got two good run defenses, right? And that could result in more passing plays for the Ravens. But also the same thing kind of happened last week, and we only walked away with 11.2 points for Flowers. So I'm not going to call him like a complete bench, a complete bust potential this week, but he definitely has the potential for a lower ceiling and getting closer to that floor that we've seen over the past couple weeks. Now, Flowers will be fine on the season as we start to wrap up, but this is one of those matchups, especially with the play of the Eagles corners right now, that I'm a little concerned when it comes to Zay Flowers. So just look at what options that you have going into week 13. And another wide receiver I'm really worried about this week is Debo Samuel, who in his last two games has 6.1 or less fantasy points. In his last four games, 12.6 or less fantasy points. Now we got Brock Purdy's status up in the air. This is going to be a headache for fantasy managers all week. I know Purdy practiced on Monday. He's been throwing, dealing with that shoulder injury in his throwing arm, but if Purdy doesn't play, then we're flat out benching Debo Samuel this week. We're not starting Debo with Brandon Allen as the starting quarterback, and we're probably not starting Jawan Jennings either. And we might even be benching Christian McCaffrey. George Kittle might be the only player I trust at that point. But even if uh, Purdy ends up playing, how healthy is Purdy actually? It's his throwing shoulder that's hurt. There's going to be a push for Purdy to play because this is an important game at this point. And the Niners season, which is drastically falling apart. They're on the road here against one of the best teams in the NFL and the Buffalo Bills. And I mean, all of that should equate to good things for Debo, but it's just a bad matchup. This Bills secondary has been very good on the season. They're giving up the eighth fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. So I'm very worried about Debo. The output has not been good as of late. Even if Purdy plays, I'm worried about Debo. You need to seriously look at what other options you have because this could be a down week for Debo Samuel in week 13. All right, last but not least is DK Metcalf of the Seattle Seahawks. He goes up against the Jets this week, giving up the fewest fantasy points to the wide receiver position. It definitely hasn't felt like that. Sauce Gardner's not having a fantastic year, but uh, that's still where the Jets rank is first against the wide receiver position. So I will say I feel the best about DK out of the wide receivers that we talked about today. He still has that big play potential, but you know, since returning from injury, he hasn't looked necessarily 100% 
back. And I mean, maybe he gets 100% back this week, but JSN obviously absolutely balling out right now. They're still going to get, you know, uh, some dump offs of Kenneth Walker and uh, Tyler Lockett has done next to nothing right now. I'm probably avoiding Lockett as well, but we just got to look at Metcalf, 9.9 .9 points in Week 12, 14 in Week 11. Not too bad, but still not a crazy high ceiling, and it took nine targets to get him there. This is just a tough matchup on the road against the Jets. Just look at what options you have because, like I said, Metcalf doesn't feel like he's fully back yet. Maybe that changes him. Uh, it's just a bad matchup here. He's coming off of a bad performance in Week 12 as well, and JSN is really emerging as the number one target in this offense for the time being. But Metcalf can easily get back there. I still am very optimistic about Metcalf on a week-to-week -week basis. Don't get me wrong. And I won't be surprised if Metcalf has a very good game, but at least consider your options here due to the matchup and look at what you got going into Week 13 at the wide receiver position. All right, one quarterback for you and that's going to be Jameis Winston of the Cleveland Browns. I hate this matchup for Jameis Winston. I know not a lot of you guys are banking on Winston in a week where we have no bye weeks, but I still have some of you guys talking about starting him, playing him, double quarterback leagues, super flex leagues, all that stuff. And I encourage you guys to not start Winston last week, and he only had 14.4 fantasy points, 18 of 27, 219 passing yards, a pick. And one rushing touchdown in the snow. So he gets a little bit of a pass there. But ultimately, I think this could be a week where Winston comes crashing back to earth. And he's just got a really tough schedule. Denver, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Cincinnati, and Miami. Cincinnati is probably the only matchup in this stretch that is worth a start. And that's in week 16. Are you going to risk that in the semifinals of the uh, fantasy playoffs? Probably not. So I think at this point we can move on from the Jameis Winston experience. It's fun to watch from afar. Not so fun when he's in your starting lineup uh, in fantasy. Rooting for Jameis Winston, don't get me wrong, but I don't like this matchup for him. It's a bad matchup. The Denver Broncos, very good against wide receivers and quarterback so this is not really going to be the easiest game for Winston just to come out and throw it 40 plus times and you know get you what we're used to seeing out of Jameis Winston in those higher ceiling games so I'm going to say Jameis Winston is a must bench player going into week 13 of the fantasy season all right and to wrap up let's go over one tight end and that's Dalton Kincaid of the Buffalo Bills one of the most disappointing players at the tight end position early draft pick is sitting as the tight end 20 on the season we've only seen double digits on the season uh three times and in all those games he has not topped more than 13.1 fantasy points he only has two touchdowns on this season as well and in each of those games he scored 13.1 fantasy points you know it's just been extremely disappointing. He's injured. He might not even play this week, but if he comes back, I'm not starting Dalton Kincaid. I think he's droppable at this point. He still sits at 78% roster. We've got way better tight end play out there. We got Kate Otten. We got Johnny Smith. We got Taysom Hill. We got all these guys that are just way better options. You got... Noah Gray, Hunter Henry, there are options at tight end who bring you safer floors, who bring you higher upside going into week 13 and beyond to wrap up the fantasy season. It's just over for Dalton Kincaid, in my opinion. Doesn't have a super strong strength of schedule outside of the Rams, uh, really left on the season. So I'm just done with this experience. He's banged up. He's hurt. Might not even play this week. I'm not crazy about Dawson Knox this week either. There's so many other pass catchers on this team at the wide receiver position. James Cook catches the ball. Josh Allen vultures all the touchdowns half the time anyways. It sucks. I was very high on Ken K going into the season, but it just has not happened. He's banged up either way. It's a bad matchup, and he's probably not really going to be necessary in this matchup if he does play anyway. So I'm done with Ken Kate on the season. If he has another good game or two, so be it. But there's just better, safer options at tight end with way more upside out there that we've been able to grab off of the waiver wire anyway. So Dalton Kincaid, a bust for me in week 13. And that'll do it for today's video. There are three running backs, three wide receivers, a quarterback and tight end that might bust in Week 13, you may want to consider avoiding those players as we approach the week. As always, guys, I'm answering all fantasy football questions in the comment section down below. So if you guys need anything whatsoever, drop me a comment. I'll get back to you guys as soon as I possibly can. But most importantly, make sure you guys are subscribed to 
the channel so that you don't miss out on any of the content because we're going to have everything that you could possibly need to make sure you guys dominate each and every week of the fantasy season as things start to wrap up. So hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the content. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.